All right, so today we're gonna to jump into, of course, Axie Infinity a little bit deeper though and understand really how the project is going. Also understand how its connection to the metaverse could be a huge break on the biggest game that is out there in blockchain today. Joining us is Alexander Larson, who's the co-founder and COO over at Sky Mavis. You know it as Axie Infinity. Alexandra, great to have you on the show. Thanks, Paul. Excited to be here just to talk about everything that's been happening at Axie and now also uh, Ronin Network, which we which finally released the, the native token for. So excited. Yeah, the, Ro the Ronin news was uh, was great this week. We've started to see that. We, have, we started to track that token in our metric side of our business. So uh, really excited to see how that starts to form and roll in. Um, we are going to kind of give our audience a little bit of a backgrounder for Sky Mavis, just for people that maybe do not and are not aware of what Axie and you know the metaverse connection is. Let's talk about Sky Mavis in general. Tell us where you guys are in terms of the size of the team. What does the company look like today? Sure, yeah. So, so you know, Sky Mavis is a little bit over 102 people right now. Uh, we're mostly based out of Vietnam, uh, but our founding team is uh, basically spread over over the entire world. So it's me from Norway, and then we have Jeff, who's from the U.S., and we have three Vietnamese co-founders. Uh, and you know that team basically means that you know east east meets west and gives us a good you know perspective on the entire ecosystem, and is also pretty much you know in my opinion why we've been able to go so far. So you're kind of brand new to to Sky Mavis and Axie Infinity products. You know, Axie Infinity is one of the largest or the largest you know, blockchain. I would say used applications uh, at this point. We have over 2.5 million daily active players, and you know the market cap for for AXS. You know it's it's generally always in the in the top uh, between 30 and 50 on on, the, on coin market cap. Um, this the equity company behind Axie Infinity is called Sky Mavis, and, and we've raised right. to date a little bit over 161 million dollars. Uh, where basically the thesis is that you know we are making the infrastructure for you know the 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 metaverse and you know different type of blockchain games and we also make the products which which brings them to life uh, so so that's it so we make axie and then we also kind of ship the, the role in the network we have our own decks and then you know various other products basically everything we need to go to market uh with a real game that's kind of what we set out to build yeah, I think a lot of people, when they uh, consider what's happening in the metaverse and just the number of, of play-to-earn games and also in general blockchain gaming as a whole, they follow our channel. We've got, we cover a ton of that. One thing that is and always different about Sky Mavis is just what you mentioned there is kind of this self-sufficiency that you guys are creating from an ecosystem standpoint, which I think is interesting. And it's also, I think it, it starts to separate you guys from the pack in, in essence of growth and growth capacity, what that's going to look like as we see adoption really kind of accelerate. I want to talk, and we're going to get into a lot of these things around connectivity to the crypto markets, all that kind of stuff. But I'm kind of curious, when you look at the overall ecosystem of play to earn gaming, blockchain gaming today, how far into adoption do you think we really are? Wow, you know, I, this entire trend was really started with with Axie, and, and it kind of took off once people started to understand that you know, hey, we can actually make some tokens when interacting with these products. So when I'm looking at you know how basically play to earn or play and earn as we call it now came to light, it's very similar to what we would find in, in you know the DeFi summer that we had, basically with yield farming, uh, except you know from from people being rewarded. Uh, when they are providing liquidity uh, in these uh, in these DeFi protocols, now you're being rewarded with tokens when you are actually providing basically liquidity in the game or you're playing the game. Uh, so, you know, Axie Infinity really kicked that off, and we started to see that you know the player base that we had, they took the tokens that we were issuing and ran with it. Now, what that means is it puts a lot of pressure on a on a really early ecosystem, and right. uh, and of course, like many things in crypto, if it goes well, you know, it really really goes well. So you get these insane bands where you know it's suddenly really high, and then it goes down, and then it's stabilizing as people kind of as they find its uh, its uh, kind of normal normalcy, and the, the the growth is kind of more normal. So uh, that's pretty much where we are uh, today. Uh, we're now working on releasing new games, different types of things inside Axie. So basically never stop innovating. And what we've seen is that, you know, our token design is now being replicated all across the space, which, you know, in my opinion is fine. But it's also, you know, uh, if you only have marginal innovation, like, 
basically copy uh, uh, copy and paste things, you know, there's no real massive quantum leaps. So then, like what we're trying to do is always be on the bleeding edge here and try to innovate and, and, and ship new features that that don't really take us from, from one to two, but you know, go from one to ten or from one to one hundred. Right. And that's actually what happened with Axie, where we you know we we had. 500, uh, 500 players, and then suddenly we had you know two point five million in a matter of you know six months or something like that. So for us, it's always about like these massive, massive uh, growth spikes. We're not optimizing for yeah, kind of you know, how do we get you know two hundred new users? That's really you know not, not not what it's about. Our goal is to educate the world about this new technology and and the benefits that it brings to players. So yeah. I always compare it to when you're looking at normal games like all of these non crypto games where people don't own anything that they do inside inside the games. And there is this, mm -hmm. sadly, backlash from the traditional gaming community where you know, a lot of people are focused on, focused on like on the environmental concerns and people think there's, there's a lot of scamming going on. But in actuality, the benefits that this brings to players is just something that you know we have been craving all along, like real ownership. It's about the ownership economy. And I think that's really what Axie Infinity and Sky Mavis is all about. And then we see like all of this other stuff piling on, like everything is about money. And then suddenly we have to take a step back and realize, hey, it's actually about community and you know educating the, the people who are playing this uh, playing these games. Yeah. Well, I think you hit a lot, a lot of uh, elements there that really kind of identify what's happening in Play to Earn and also the growth of the market in general. You know, we're tracking a ton of metrics around market growth on Play to Earn, the transition between AAA gaming and what we're seeing in traditional studios. And then also what we're seeing in the number of blockchain studios that we talk to here on this show. So there is, there is a certain level of ramp up period, but at the same time, when we look at this, which we identify a lot of trends in their early stages, a lot with our, our power index, and we, we still look at blockchain gaming as a very, a very nascent um, area of the market with you know, just tremendous ability to grow. So I think your particular scenario and story is one that you know, we love to track because it does kind of show the footprint of what this landscape and ecosystem could be in the future. I want to get into, um, back to your team for a second. All right, 102 people. The expansion capacity of that team from a, de a developer standpoint, because as we see Sky Mavis grow and, and your team grow in general, new projects coming on, developers are the lifeblood of any of those kinds of studios. What is it that you guys are doing that really draw in the talent to help you kind of make that next leap? Yeah, the good thing about being based, like having a base in Vietnam is that we can, you know, we made a name for ourselves for being you know the the powerhouse in that country. So we get so much band, like so many developers who are coming in there, and a part of that is actually that that our C, uh, CEO and CTO they both represented Vietnam in the ICM ICPC, which is mm -hmm. the Competitive Coding Championship or Collegiate Collegiate Coding Championship. And that combined with basically the fact that they've now made Axie the the, the entire tech stack means that you know we can recruit from the, the top universities and find really really massive talent. Now, if you combine that that with the capital that we have and the fact that we're also on the bleeding edge, like internationally, we can now hire just the best people in the world. And, and I think uh, by a little leak here, I can say that we're already recruiting from from uh, like the likes of Niantic and and, and other like yeah. massive traditional game studios. So uh, I'm very excited about the future and, and, and unveiling some of the some of the talent that we have here. And I can just say that it's only the beginning. So you know, uh, like my role as a CEO is basically a janitor. Right now, what I'm doing right now is you know hiring, <laughs> trying to find yeah. the best people. Also handle basically, of course, all the finances and everything that you know, all the raising and that we do and. Uh, that the business side of it, but generally speaking, sure. if you say that you know finding the right people is is like very very important for us if we're going to keep our market position here as as industry leaders. Yeah, I think one of the key positions that I've been watching you know develop in you know my history is really understanding technology, building technology companies in my history with Microsoft and et cetera. One thing that I've always understood is that you know, whether you're working with developers or you're working with key positions in trying to make a product go to life and really become a market fit is in your particular case, I see this whole economy side of Axie and what is being constructed there. So from the economist side of the gameplay, how many people do you have working on the economy? And do you have a lead economist that's really structuring how the gameplay is being done, somewhat of the art behind it? Yes, I mean, I can say that the 
uh, when we started out, our team was very involved in almost everything. We still are. Now we have dedicated personnel who's like basically looking like all day uh, at the in-game economy. And, and for Axie Origin, for example, what we're focusing on there is, you know, what kind of systems can we make that, that turn this into a basically a sustainable economy? And that means right. that, you know, people in Axie, they have to play for fun. They need to treat this as an entertainment platform, but in the, at the same time, they need to also be able to, to extract some value there if they are putting enough like value into this ecosystem. Uh, so, you know, that's something that we spend a whole lot of time on and we have a dedicated team. Like we have one person who's on it and the core team is very involved in some of the reasons and we, some of the, uh, some of the de decisions. And we also work very closely with but for example, Delphi Digital, who who has helped us, you know, design the AXS token economy and one of the some of the sharpest, you know, uh, economists in the entire space, especially when it comes to to token design. So right. yeah, I can say that we're covered there. Obviously, when I'm looking back, there are changes that we maybe should have made sooner. But but you know, at the same time, when you're, it's only uh, you can only make so many changes based on theoretical, you know, simulations. It all kind of goes to to the ground when when suddenly a couple of massive whales come in and you know, pump it up or dump it. Like so, so these systems are definitely being tested to the maximum. And the great thing here is that you know it's a microcosm of what's actually represented in real life. So if we can make this work like online inside a game like Axie for you know two point five million players, maybe we can you know expand that into into other models that can be used in real life. And that's what I'm looking at. Like these smaller games, like making a system that works for you know 1,000 1, people or 10,000 people, it's actually right. not that hard because they are closed loops. But when you start to become bigger and bigger and bigger, you open yourself up for you know various attacks or all sorts of different vectors that is really hard to 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 consider. So I'm just super excited to to be working on this, and I think that you know we're way ahead of <laughs> of of what others uh, might uh, like, especially when it comes to understanding. I think uh, there there are some things that you you just have to experience. Yeah, I think you hit it there is, you know, being the early adopter, first movers usually have those kinds of ability to go break things, fix them, break them again, that whole model that has been somewhat kind of uh, adopted in Silicon Valley, kind of that's what Silicon Valley was really built on. And if you look at it from an economy standpoint, especially around play to earn, this is something that we talk about a lot here is the game economy uh, structures that we will start to see as more play to earn and blockchain gaming comes really into full life and really start to cross over to AAA titles and, and starting to soak up some of that major opportunity in terms of growth. These economies are going to be super, super important because in, in essence, you're creating kind of an ecosystem that's never been really done before in gaming. And I think that within the function of real life is going to be super huge both in opportunity and also in challenge, because I think the developers themselves, yep. they're learning new skill sets. Even though, sure, they've been doing it with AAA titles, but the idea of doing that in real life and earning money that can be put out in a marketplace, all those kind of things, big, big difference, uh, but it's good to Actually, see. Actually, can I hear you something here before we yeah. move on? Yeah. Because I think you're talking on something that's, you know, so, so important. But when, when we're looking at, like, because it actually segues into, you know, a little bit of Sky Mavis and our plans right now. You know, we're talking to many, many different types of developers to potentially publish their games uh, on the Mavis Hub. And, and what we see there is, you know, these developers, they, they have a lot of experience, basically what I would call making a player versus environment system, right? So mm -hmm. you are only creating, you're creating a, a kind of a one-sided system where the goal is always to extract as much value from the player uh, as a developer, right? Because you take all of the money. But if you flip right. that a little bit around, that's really when you can find like how hard it is to make a fully sustainable system when the players are like working with each other because that's a real economy. What you're mm -hmm. making in a traditional game is not an economy. It's a business model. That's only yeah. that's only designed to enrich one person, and that's you know the developers. So now you have to think about it in a different way, and I think that's quite challenging. But that's also why the brightest minds and economists are coming into the space, and why we're seeing so like it's a massive brain drain uh, into into this entire you know uh, blockchain gaming space. And I would really uh, what I would say is that you know while play and earn has like play to earn has been a buzzword, what I think is you will find is that there will be more. You know, people will take a step back and focus more on play and earn. Like there should be right. an ability to earn, but you know, if everyone is coming in only to earn, like it's going to be too. Like it's not a sustainable system. So you really sure. need to, to to be careful about that kind of messaging. And what we see in Axie is that you know, it's actually our players. They made the play to earn you know messaging, and we leaned into it because it's a great for marketing. Uh, but now we need to you know reframe it a little bit. 
and teach people that you know these are the very meticulously designed economies that need to be like they need to function in a good way and i think that's uh, the the tricky part right now which you know probably not only we uh, are going to 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 be doing in the coming uh, years but you know a lot of other like blockchain game studios will, will also realize yeah i think it's an exciting time because i think it is one of those things that it, in essence once that you get to a point in technology devs where you advance the uh, the set of the science behind it is it really starts to create new opportunities for developers, which is a big deal because if you think about just in general what's happening ha has been happening over the last decade in AAA studios, and not that it's a bad thing, but there's a certain you know there's a certain wall that those developers are hitting. Now you're opening up a whole new idea of what games can be, especially as we see this move into the metaverse, because that in itself, along with the economies that will uh, intersect with that are gonna be very, very interesting to go. I wanna jump into uh, Lunation uh, Express. Talk a little bit about kind of the event success, whether or not you felt that this was a full success, the goal of it, kind of give me the insight of, of where, this, um, where this landed. Yeah, so that's a, that's a actually a very uh, detailed question. So maybe there might be some viewers who don't really know too much about it. So. In Axie, we're always experimenting a little bit. So what does it mean to, you know, how much is an Axie worth? Like there are some Axies in the ecosystem, which, you know, probably aren't being used for so much because they might be failed breeds or, you know, maybe they don't function in the metagame. So we want to add utility for them over time. But at the same time, it can't be, you know, too extractive. So when we look at Axies right now, there one Axie is a never ending ticket to producing yield, basically. And that means that it's sometimes just going to be too much for the ecosystem to handle. So we need to reduce the supply a little bit sometimes. And that means that we're, we are now creating, you, it's a not, a lot of people are calling it like a burn event. We say that, you know, axes, they can't die, but they can be released back into the wild. So these axes are being released into the wild. And then the players are, are getting something in return, which is a land item. And they're participating also in, in the lottery. So uh, basically right now, uh, over 90,000 axes have been released. Um, and there's been close to 35,000 participants. And there is, you know, we, we're still uh, quite early in the campaign. So I think I would estimate, you know, somewhere between 120 and 130,000 axes to be released total, which is, you know, about where we, we thought that, that it would end up. Uh, so it's a great first, you know, experiment. And I think that over time, we will we'll be adding more you know, like release events so that, you know, axes have a place to go in case their owners, you know, don't have, uh, don't have room for them in their stables. I, I think that I, it was. A, I think it's a good strategy in the sense of you know just trying to somewhat kind of control. It's kind of like what the Fed's doing with interest rates here in the U.S. of being able to control the economy and get a, some sort of understanding of how that potentially can scale at the levels that we're talking about in the future. So definitely a big part of that. Um, so in your opinion, this has been a big success right now. So I would say it's it's, it's uh, well within what we estimated. So yeah, I would okay. call it a success. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about right now, the, over, you know, three point five million dollars worth of axes or so have yeah, been burned, yeah. which is you know quite significant just by looking at the dollar value. And yeah, I think you know sure. that's that's uh, it, it's a, it's a great first experiment, and I, I guess we'll see. You know, how can we incentivize people to 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 uh, uh, to part with their precious axes? But you know, the thing here is, it's actually it feels physically bad sometimes to, to release you know your digital pets because you care about them, and I yeah. think people who aren't in NFTs. They, they aren't really used to this feeling that, you know, hey, I actually, re I'm releasing something. There's no way to get it back. Like, that's a pretty strong emotion. And that's yeah. also a little bit of why, what we're trying out as game designers. Right? We always want to make sure that, you know, there is, if people need to care. And if they do mm -hmm. care, you know, that's, that, then we've succeeded. Yeah, for sure. Alexander, let's get into kind of the, you, you touched on this a minute, uh, and that was kind of play to earn versus play and earn you know, the fun side of it, because that, that has been a little bit of the pushback from traditional gamers today. This eventually is going to collide with what the entire gaming market is, is really about. So when you look mm -hmm. at that, what's the healthy, you know, mix of that evolution within blockchain gaming? When you look at the number of blockchain gaming companies that are coming to market, a lot of new games coming out this year, both in play and earn some on complete NFT and digital economies uh, versus you know token driven. Talk to me about what that healthy mix is for the transition into what eventually will be a play and earn you know model. Yeah, this is a, this is a great question, and, and you know 
or generally speaking, like more musing about what's happening in the, in the entire space. Uh, so what I can say is I'm also on the, the, the board of uh, directors at the Blockchain Game Alliance, uh, and we're looking very broadly in, like around the space, looking at how many people are coming in, like where are the AAA gaming studios? And it still has a, like a smack of amateur and I would say opportunistic uh, people who are coming into the space, right? Because there's so much capital that's loosely flowing uh, that, that you can raise a lot and, and then, you know, just, you know, heads down build for several years. And some of the valuations for these companies too are also insane relative to, to actually what they are, uh, what they are shipping or, or where they are in development phases. So, but what I think is in a couple of years, uh, we're going to see a couple of great games come out of this, you know, Cambrian explosion of funding. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm also a little bit cautious that, you know, it, it's not necessarily given that, that. Uh, some of that, that, that a lot of them will, will even launch in, in the first place. Just because shipping a game is quite hard yeah. and shipping a successful game, well, very few people in in the world has actually done that. So I, that's why I'm cautiously optimistic, uh, but, you know, we're very closely, uh, closely looking at the space and, and I welcome everyone because I think it's so great that there's a lot of different, uh, I would say, experimentations going on because in Axie, we had no respect for basically the entire traditional gaming industry. Everyone was... If not shaming us, but they just don't didn't care because they didn't respect yeah. what was going to happen here. They didn't respect the ownership of you know game assets in the same way that you know the, what they should. And it turns out that when people realize that you know there's a massive massive opportunity. Um, and when I'm looking back, I think you know our timing was amazing. And if you shipped uh, the same quality game like Axie today, it wouldn't be as popular. And that's just by essence of being early. Now, what I can say from Sky Mavis is that you know we're very you know we're eagerly looking forward to shipping more features inside our game universe, which are of even higher quality, of course, uh, but then also publishing other games from basically the best game companies in the world and making sure that people understand you know that Mavis, the Mavis Hub, basically our version of Steam, mm -hmm. is the most valuable real estate in the entire blockchain gaming space. Like that's that should be clear considering that. You know, nobody else really has any users. And I think right. everyone else is speculating that, you know, our game is going to be a success, but, you know, they, they might underestimate just how, how difficult it is to go to market. Like when we went to market, you know, we couldn't ship our game on the app stores. We had to make our own distribution right. channel. Sure. Uh, so, so we didn't have a wallet. We need to make our own wallets. We didn't have a blockchain, so we made our own blockchain. I think all of these things connected means that it takes a long time to go to market for some of these games. And it's not necessarily that it's... That it's uh, that is going to be easy in the future either, because some of these, especially on the regulatory side, it, it's quite uh, it's qu quite difficult to, to launch something, especially from the U.S. and Europe. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think you you hit on it right there. Is there is a lot of uh, projects that are coming onto the scene right now. It does feel a little bit like a, a land grab or a gold rush, but at the same time, we're we're most likely. I mean, we're interviewing CEOs and and founders, tech devs all the time around some of these projects. Some of these are, I'm impressed with one, the teams, also the potential for some of these, but you are right, there are a lot that are in most likelihood going to you know, fail. But I think that's in general when you look at blockchain and really in the tech space. Tech space is kind of in the is, same. Right? Yeah, it, you've, got, you've got the best of breed that eventually will become the major, if maybe there's a breakout unicorn in there and maybe there's not, but and there, there's also a lot of those mid-range successes that are huge, but they're not, you know, necessarily gonna gonna take it to the next level where I see you yeah, guys really kind yeah, of I think I think it. that's it. And and the question is from an investor perspective, like when you look at some of the prices here, it's mm -hmm. already priced in this medium level of success. Yeah. So if yeah. this is going to be a good investment, these games are going to have to 10x from the medium level of success. And that that is basically a unicorn. And finding yeah. a unicorn from a like a game investor perspective is insanely hard. And I can say that speaking from an investor perspective, and even as being an advisor to some of these VC funds, like I, I think it's a, a lot of people might be overestimating their ability to pick winners, uh, especially like as all markets are going up, right? Even a monkey can you know hit uh, the jackpot, but that doesn't mean that you are a, like a, a, an amazing investor until these companies have actually shipped something. You might be good at you know betting on tokens when everything is going up, but like I right. would say that you know, shipping a game is insanely difficult. Uh, so for me, I'm actually kind of bearish on on some of the high valuations, especially until I can see something has shipped. But you know, proven in the crypto space, like we've been here now for several years, what we see is you know valuations are totally out of whack relative to to what they've been shipping, and that's just the the, the way it is so far. Uh, yeah. So it's probably going to be the same in the crypto space, but of course in the in the gaming space. But I would advise caution because 
it's even easier for people to see through uh, to see through these uh, see through these games um, rather than like blockchain uh, blockchain networks because like blockchain networks it's kind of obfuscated where it's hard for people to understand like smart contracts and you know suddenly you know that they're shipping different types of uh, how can I say now we're, we're, we're on a new update. It's called something special. You know, you can hide, you know, your failures in different type of names, yeah. but in a gaming, you know, update, it's very clear. Are these guys shipping or not? When is the game coming? Like what's coming or not? So, so yeah, the, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm cautiously like paying attention here. Let's talk about onboarding improvements. Uh, when you look at obviously with the U S you know, we, we are a little bit more challenged here. We can't buy with fiat. The scenarios of onboarding for you in terms of strategies moving forward, what's that going to look like? Yeah, so, so when I'm looking at Axie right now, it's, it's insanely hard to get started. I mean, you mm -hmm. still need to have your wallet address. You still need to buy, like, buy crypto. Uh, you need to set up your own rolling wallet. There is literally no way for people to play the game for free, and you, you can't do that on, the, on any app store. So what we're doing now is shipping a new game, which is called Axie Origin. Uh, it's an updated yep. version of the current card game that we have with like more... Fancy graphic, just a better user experience overall. And that will also have, you know, free to play. So players can just, if you're in, in, in America or Europe, you don't want to download an APK on your Android device. And a lot of people don't even have Android devices. So, right. you know, they have iOS devices. And that goes for me too. Like uh, right now you can download Axie on test flight, but you know, it's full 10,000 users only. So what we mm -hmm. need to do is ship it on the, on, the, on the Google Play Store, for example, and the iOS uh, uh, store and Absolutely. that's happening as well so we're working really hard towards that so expect a soft launch uh, in the coming months and, and i can't wait to, to to launch the new game and see you see the response you know honestly when i see axie i think of a game that and a game ip that has the potential to rival pokemon and why would it not because so many people already it's changed the lives of millions mm -hmm. it's put food on the table for millions of millions of players and to me that's incredibly exciting because people have good feelings about axies already and there is nostalgia there and it's the same thing as what happened, you know, early on with Pokemon. And imagine when we were putting out animes and had more games inside Axie. So I'm, I'm excited. I think it's just the beginning. Yeah. So onboarding, well, the, the aspect of, you know, the, I should say the shard or the, the additional game aspect, you, you see this going more into the mobile experience. What about into yeah. the set-top experiences, you know, the consoles themselves? Yeah, that, that's a little bit different, right? So, so when, I'm at, when I'm looking at Axie, I'm, I want to make a game that, that feels like looks and feels amazing on mobile. Like that's the mm -hmm. main purpose, but you know, when you're playing it on PC, it looks stylish. So that's yeah. kind of the, 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 the separation there. And it means that uh, you can basically play it on PC too, but the, but it, it won't have the same, you know, triple A feeling. So when I'm looking at triple A PC games, I'm like, wow, the production here is, you know, several hundreds of millions of dollars, but what actually, what Axie is aiming for is accessibility. Uh, and right. that means that you know potentially it can also be used on crossplay, but you know that that's uh, it's a little bit of a different uh, thing that that we have to get to to over time. But the mobile gaming market is just you know massive, uh, so if you can tackle that one, I'll I'll be happy. And actually, like I'm I'm not sure if it makes sense to like if if even these traditional you know game studios, the Nintendos and and you know the 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 play the the, the Sony's of the world will, will even want blockchain. Like there's an mm -hmm. ongoing cultural war between like blockchain gaming developers and traditional developers. Right. Like it feels sometimes like they're being flooded by their own users who don't understand what they're even, what they're even complaining about. So, so because they're, they keep like uh, saying that NFTs are evil inherently, which, you know, of course, like no technology is evil. So I think, you know, we have a lot of education to do there. And that's why I also don't want to trust these, these large, uh, like existing studios. You know, we're here to disrupt them. So that, yeah. that's our purpose. Yeah, well, I think you, you hit on the, the point there and is in any kind of, of transition of technology, there's always some resistance. We saw it with the iPhone and the BlackBerry. We saw it with the internet. We saw it with social media. All of the real leaps forward in tech, we've already seen that happen in the sense, and I think gaming is no different, in the sense that you have big and large communities that have been very passionate about these things. It does take a little bit of time for them to really understand where that leap is going to take place how it's going to take place. And I think it's just, you know, projects and companies like what you guys are doing are going to probably lead that way in how it might work. Let's talk about 2D, 3D gameplay and what the potential for the future looks like there. Will we see 3D in Axie Infinity? 
Yeah, so we actually did a massive, uh, uh, I would say, upgrade to our land system. So that's going to be in 3D, and, and we're also right. already like very like advanced in developing 3D models, and they, like it's 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 going to look beautiful in the end. Like as the Axie Infinity or Sky Mavis team is growing, we now have um, uh, like so many resources that we never had available before. So honestly, it's uh, it's uh, really gratifying to see our vision come to life when we have so many people who are, who are working on this. And like what I would say is, the Sky Mavis is halfway a tech company and halfway a, a game studio. Right. Uh, so, so we have dedicated personnel working on it, and of course, uh, we we are using also uh, various contractors uh, to to help build out the models for 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 axes. So I think you know if people own an axe, they will soon be able to see that in three D as well, and like Ma. live on their land. So it should be great. That's gonna be fun. That that'll be a good one. All right, let's get into some metaverse questions here because I think a lot of of our topics really kind of lean into the metaverse and what that might mean in the future. When you look at the Axie Infinity uh, Builders Program state of that first of all explain it to some of our our you know yeah. our audience they may not really understand to what you you guys are trying to do here yeah so i think first let's let's uh, you know take a step back in, into into understanding of why we are, we're building the the Ronda network which is our own uh, you know side chain to ethereum mm -hmm. so when we started building axie early in 2018 everything was on on ethereum uh, you know everything was on chain it was really hard to play the game um, and it's slow so what we realized, we have to take a step back and we have to actually, you know, redeploy some of our stuff. And, and we tried on Loom Network first, which, which then actually, you know, they shut down, started focusing on healthcare. Uh, and then we built out our own sidechain. Uh, and what's happening there is that that sidechain is designed to power Axie Infinity stuff and mm -hmm. also be a multi-purpose chain for other like top quality NFT games. Now, the strategy here is simple. We're looking for a couple of top partners. Uh, that we will distribute on our own Navy sub, which you can, you know, compare to something like Steam or Battle.net. Uh, and that's kind of on the on the really high end, like premier partners. And then when we look at Axie Infinity, we have an ecosystem which is very organic. We have so many people who want to build stuff, like build experiences on top of Axie, and we want to open up the Ronin network for them too. But it has to be uh, kind of a slow process because if we open up uh, the, the chain to basically everyone who wants to build, like it's in the thousands. We have right. 1300 applications in the builders program so far mm -hmm. from people who want to, to make like experiences on top of Axie. So, so we have to be careful there because the, like the worst thing that we want to see is kind of a, a situation where, you know, the blockchain is being spammed by a kind of a, a Ponzi uh, like mechanic just because it just because it has, we've seen it happen in the, in the past, like most noticeably with Sunflower Farm game on Polygon like where you know polygon was you know really didn't function for several days so what we have to do is be a little bit careful uh, and we want to like uh, work only with close partners so the builders program is is a first step to kind of gauging the interest in the community and seeing like if we have talented developers uh, who are in there like they can get the access to to axie you know art and then build experiences on top of axie infinity which then add more value to axies and then eventually also get like access to deploy contracts on Ronda network. So uh, we have that happening. And then we also have like on the top end, we have these like major partners that Sky Mavis is working with, like some of the some of the best game studios in the world, which I can't you know say exactly who is mm -hmm. right now, but yeah. it should be really fun to, to announce that over time. Uh, yeah. So how far with the builders program are there any projects that are close to fruition, um, completion? Where when would we see? No, some it's, of it's still it's still very very early stage. I mean, we're, we're still looking at all the applications. We have to see like how, how, are there, but there are some very very. I, what I can say is there are great. Uh, there are some great uh, experiences that 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 we think is going to please the community. So Very I'm excited cool. about it, but obviously I have to, to keep something in, in the bag just in case. You know, you know, like game, the thing with game development is is it always takes longer than you think. Yeah, no doubt. What about maybe a Squid Game style with X with X? Yeah, Any I mean, plans so, for that. So, you know, for, for Axie, when we look at the future of, uh, you know, the, the Lunasia and the land gameplay, we always said that we wanted to make a, a very simple, you know, SDK or map editor at first, uh, like eventually. Uh, so this builder programs is basically the start of that. So that we can see, like, we can gauge the interest, what kind of tools do they need? Like, can we, uh, like, basically acquire other teams who have existing map editors and just kind of smack that in, like, use Axie assets? That's very simple. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that make sense, or do we have to build these tools from scratch and then allow right. people to, to 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 make their own games? And when that happens, you know that's when you find games like Squid Game and you know everything. Because when you look at Axie, I see a social network. 
because axes mm -hmm. are inherently like a lot of people want to interact with others with the axie game characters that they have. So for me, that's kind of the, the the exciting part of it. Just compete with others with axes and and and, and hang out with them. Just as you you know you would do in, in World of Warcraft, you're hanging around in Ogrimmar, you're jumping. Like same thing is happening. Just now it's Discord. Yeah, you being a, a Dota uh, pro player, when you think about kind of the evolution of Axie, what are the, the potential for like a MOBA game? Sure, I know. The way I see axes is that they are primitives that that can potentially fit into any type of you know game potentially you know from a mobile from a mobile experience. I mean, obviously, my preference is that type of really really high level eye hand coordination, mm -hmm. like micro, almost like an RTS type of game. Uh, I love that stuff, but you know uh, maybe not uh, everyone who has not everyone has a PC. Uh, and we're also trying to understand our user base a little bit more, so we know what kind of games should we double down on. Uh, and that's also, you know, very interesting for, from a game developer perspective. So what are the adjacent games that our players are playing? Right. Should we add more of that or should we, it's like a Venn diagram. Should you be like very closely uh, like overlapping or maybe you should be a little bit to the side. So, you know, you're not cannibalizing your own user base. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be a key, a key aspect. And you're right. Just adoption curves that we'll see just because of, you know, whether you're, you are PC or iOS, I think that that evolution is going to be a really big one. Let's talk about, you You touched a little bit on social features. Can you kind of explain that a little bit more on what, what you see in terms of improvements in social features within the game? Sure. So when I'm thinking about like social features, like I, I'm considering right now everything is happening on Discord, right? You have guilds, for example, people are communicating with each other, with each other there and communicating internally. Uh, but you no, know, the guild feature is eventually going to come inside Axie. And then eventually, like as we add chat rooms and all of that stuff, it's just going to be more immersive. So everything that we're trying to design for is a very immersive experience. And that kind of leads me to, to the metaverse. So what I would say is the metaverse is a very immersive type of experience, which is everyone is sharing the same state. Basically, right. and when I mean that, I say that the use, the, the, all the assets are kind of on the on the same blockchain. Uh, like the time is flowing, moving forward. If one thing changes on, you know, this place, you know, that's also reflected like all, all across the entire world. There aren't 50 different shards, right? Not 50 different servers. It's one server. That's what I'm thinking about when I'm seeing the metaverse. And that's basically the internet and life. So they are yeah. very connected to each other. And I think to me, like, that's what I want to build with Axie. It's just like our approach is very much on the, what I would call the Fortnite way of building things. So when I see Fortnite, I see a, a, a platform that started out as a very simple game at first. Like people are hanging around there, they're, they're, they're kind of parachuting down. And then eventually, you know, it became something else, a place where, you know, it's going to be a virtual world in the end. People go to concerts together. I don't see a right. reason why we can't do that. And actually too, when we're building out that 3D feature, it's going to be more immersive too. So to, to me, that's like the social feature and, and the level of immersion that, that I'm designing for. Yeah. What about chat and battles with friends? Because that's you can't necessarily do that yet in the game. What are, is that on the roadmap for development soon? Yeah. So, so with Axie Origin, uh, right now you can actually you know challenge your friends if you have them on your friends list inside the game and inside the card battle game. And it's going to be even easier to do that than even host your own tournaments and you know all of mm -hmm. these. And you know, I would say traditional esports features is something that we're also building out inside Axie right. Origin. Uh, but when you're looking at Axie Origin. It's something that we we basically wanted to go back and redo some of the stuff that we've done because we we felt that it would have more potential for mainstream adoption. When I'm looking at the current Axie game, I see something that was made by more of a naive younger developer. And when I'm seeing the Axie Origin Origin game, I see something that's more mature, that's more thought out of. Like the game loops are better. Pretty much everything is better in terms of tutorials. So it's basically the game that we wanted to make, but we didn't have the resources for it. So yeah, that I can tell you that 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 is coming for sure. All right. So when you when you think you look at the expansion of what we've seen within the metaverse so far of the projects that are trying to go in this direction, very few have been able to really achieve anything that has been to the level that you guys have done in terms of play to earn. What are your thoughts on how Sky Mavis Axie will kind of bridge that gap and truly enter into a metaverse experience? So yeah. So when I look at Axie. And I would say that it's already a part of the metaverse. It's just a different 
So a lot of people might not even realize it because when you look at like mm -hmm. how much money is flowing into it, like almost $4 right. billion dollars worth of assets have been traded on our NFT marketplace. Like what that means is that people actually care about these game assets. Now that might be a part of it because they are productive and they can actually be used for something inside the game. And another part is the emotional connection. And that emotional connection is insanely important when you consider implications of, of an IP and a, and a virtual world as a part of, of the metaverse. So I think just what we want to do is build more emotional connection to the assets that, to the Axie assets. And that could be like, maybe someone will in the future use Axies as profile pictures, definitely seeing that trend. And a lot of people are like connecting with their assets, but it's not easy to do that yet. So, you know, that's a part of being a part of, of what I would say the metaverse. And, and when I'm comparing it to these traditional game companies, or, you know, let's say the meta company or Facebook, like I, I just, I, I, I actually, I don't think that we should let them co-opt the term metaverse. And it's actually the, either it's an evil genius move by Zuckerberg <laughs> to rename his uh, company meta, but you know, it doesn't like, it's still a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. So, you right. know, to me, it, it's like, well, you know, if people, hopefully people understand this, just how important it is to, or they are starting to understand how important it is to actually own your own data. And you yes. know, that's one of the key aspects of why we started building Axie and also like Sky Mavis. So what I believe in is that people online, you should be able to own whatever it is that you do. And that includes game assets mm -hmm. and includes data sets when you're on Facebook or on Twitter. Like some, and some people are, are saying, oh, that doesn't really matter. But it actually matters so much because, you know, if you consider the long-term implications of owning all of your data in one black box and then being able to show it to others when you need to, and then potentially getting paid for that because it, it is valuable. Like that to me is Web3 and blockchain. So I think to yeah. me, that's, you know, also a part of the, going to be a part of the metaverse. You mentioned uh, the Mavis Hub earlier and kind of talk to me about what your roadmap and what that future might look because you see VR potentially in the metaverse. We see new applications, new environments, new worlds, obviously the game elements besides what we'll see in the NFT side of things. But w w talk to me about Mavis Hub and kind of that roadmap. Yeah, so the Mavis Hub is is one of the like more key features or key products that we have in Axie, which is or Sky Mavis, which, which sometimes you know I think people uh, are underestimating. Um, and when you when you zoom out a little bit, what you can see is is a, basically a, a platform to rival Steam, where the mm -hmm. idea is that we will publish the best and then eventually all NFT games uh, who want to access to a marketplace and to a live user base. Uh, and, and, you know, the, creating like very, very good developer tools for them so that they can really tap into it easily. That's something that we're working on right now. And I think that in a sense is also where the, the marketplace is going to be so that people can very simply like connect their wallets in there. And whenever they're signing up to whichever game, they suddenly have their wallet as well. And what that means is that the Mavis Hub can even have DeFi services in it as well. And imagine that, then you suddenly have banking services inside a gaming account, which is you know, truly groundbreaking. So for me, that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm working on and what I'm seeing. And yeah, you hit, actually, you hit, yeah, actually, yeah, sorry, you can go. I was just saying, you hit on something we've talked about before here on the show is the evolution of where that metaverse and connectivity will be, especially around crossing those boundaries and barriers that have been there in the past, because you have had these uh, isolated islands out here of, the gaming economy, the lack of the fact that you can't really trade outside the game, all those elements, much less being able to cross over into utility and to other aspects of what the metaverse may hold, e-commerce, banking, financial. We could see a lot more integration in the future for sure. So it's interesting that you, you guys say that uh, and talk about that. When Okay, so there are a couple of things here. There's so many questions I have for you. When you look at, all right, so let's talk about one. First question is, going in the direction of being able to take those NFT assets and really truly going outside the marketplace. Is that in the roadmap to where we will see that in the future? Yeah, so act like Roman network right now is, is permissions. Uh, and it actually is like that on purpose. So, but Axie assets, they, they came from Ethereum and it's only natural that, you know, they will be able to bridge back to Ethereum. Okay. And, and when, when I'm saying like, what is utility for assets in other games? I mean, I would like to, to open it up so that people can use potential Axie assets in their games. But, you know, the, then the question sounds like, why would, would other game developers do that? I think we're quite a, a couple of years ahead until we see basically that level of interoperability uh, where it makes sense. And I think we're actually going to see 
hostile approaches from other games trying to use game assets from a successful game in their game right. to get users. So I see that as being like more uh, more likely to happen rather than that that very positive like hey the the combi are hey everyone can come here use their assets because that really takes a long time to build and not only that but also the meta game surrounding it like so who are the so who are the people who will like balance all this stuff out. All right, Alexander, I want to get into kind of, and I, I would agree with that. I think the evolution, especially if you think about NFTs as collectibles, what we've seen in the, in the world of collectibles and NFTs really growing, we're going to see more and more of that. So I do think there's going to be a framework in place to really see main games moving in that direction, especially if you look at the AAA studios who are starting to put together, you know, a very good library of titles that could do some cross integration. So I think at some point we'll see that in blockchain for sure. Let's go on to my last question around the metaverse, and that is um, the metaverse itself, the projects in play to earn gaming, uh, blockchain gaming in general, we're seeing a little bit of decoupling from the traditional crypto markets on this cycle. How long before you think we'll see a complete decoupling of those assets, those projects, away from the traditional crypto markets? Hmm. Value it's decoupling. Hard to say. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say like if that is ever actually going to happen because they're so connected, like as long as these assets live on, for example, Ethereum and the, the trading pairs are, you know, for example, AXS, ETH, right. you know, that, that when, when ETH goes down, you know, it's going to drag it down. When ETH goes up, it's going to go up. That, that's just the, the, way the, the way the market works uh, right now. Um, and when you're looking at the decoupling, I think it's just standard. What you see is actually a, a, a rebalance of, or a repricing of assets that, that are actually productive in terms of you mm -hmm. know, cash flows. Uh, so comparing, for example, to, to actually, you know, having revenues over $1 billion uh, in, in, in 2021 is, is pretty massive. And that should also you know, mean that the, the AXS token should be valued really highly. Uh, and then, you know, what happened eventually is that as the market uh, dropped down, you know, the, they pulled basically everything down. And then you, you see also a repricing of every other, you know, basically crypto gaming asset who might be, you know, riding on the on the on the cattails of, of Axie, uh, but they don't have the same, you know, revenue streams at all. Uh, so, right. so to me, it, it, it's uh, it's very interesting to follow the market. I try to not speculate too much. I'm mostly focused on like building. Um, but of course, you know, I would be remiss to, to, to kind of say that, that it doesn't matter at all, but that it's, it's, it's not something that, that I'm too focused on, but I, what I will say is that it's, it's going to be like any traditional major industry, like for example, when you look at gaming, that, that is totally decoupled from finance in real life. So, or, right. you know, most of the time, unless the market falls down. So, but, but, but yeah, I don't see, I don't think we're ever going to have like a 100% decoupling as long as all these assets are still on the blockchain, because what's going to happen is. You know, if let, let's say some black swan event happens or, you know, mm -hmm. someone reinvents quantum computing or an EP, EMP goes off and like all blockchains go down, like everything is lost, like, you know, then we're all fucked. So, you know, that <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Uh, Katana updates, more tokens planned for addition. Do you see that five now on, on Katana now? What's that? What's that going to look like? Yeah, so, so uh, a quick note there on Katana. For those who are not familiar with Katana, it's our old native DEX on the Ronin uh, network. It's one of the most you know used DEXs in the world, especially if one has you know a very high liquidity for Axie related assets. Uh, and the interesting thing a lot of people might have missed out is actually that the Katana DEX is owned by the Ronin network itself. So mm. all of the revenue streams there are being captured in a wallet, which then again potentially will go to the Ronin network holders. Uh, so yeah, we are of course uh, planning to to add different like new tokens there. But what's interesting with Katana is that it's actually a uh, uh, the, uh, the the protocol, the marketplace protocol for you know all type of different uh, assets uh, when it comes when it comes to fungible assets in other games. So wood, stone, whatever that might be, you know, all of that can be powered by Katana because you know that's the beauty of smart contracts. So I think you know that we're going to see so many cool things happening uh, on on Katana Dex. Yeah. Right now, U.S. citizens really only, you know, only transport model for uh, AXS is through MetaMask. So with that kind of in the play, because it is a little bit clunky to, to move Axis around or AXS around. Do you see this kind of really yeah, transplanting? Uh, yeah, I think you can buy actually AXS on Coinbase and other U.S. exchanges. Well, uh, well being you know, able I, to I transport it. Yeah, I think you can transport it to Ethereum and then bridge to... to uh, 
exactly. uh, to to uh, to run the network. Uh, in terms of a fiat bridge for AXS, mm. like directly from credit card, you know that is in the works. But you know, legal. There are like the sad thing about being an American, you know, the, the SEC. Like, I I don't want to. I'm not going to call all this out <laughs> someone, but you know, honestly, it, it's not really great what's happening over there sometimes. So I, I uh, but we're trying our best to, to, to serve American clients uh, if possible, where possible. Uh, yeah. But you know, we won't break laws to, 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 to serve them. And I think that's the, that's the, that's the general uh, feeling here, but you know, as soon as humanly possible and legally possible. How long before uh, the Ronan bridge is, is obsolete or really no, no longer needed? Hmm. That's, a, that's a good question. It, it actually ties that into, you know, when is Ronin Network going to be the the, 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 the main NFT platform, right? But what, right. what I'm say, thinking is there are some people who would want to store their assets on Ethereum anyway, because they right. want to be connected to the broader Ethereum ecosystem, because that's where the most valuable assets potentially in the world are. Um, and because it's a flex to have, you know, your NFT on Ethereum, like linked to, to, to Twitter, for example. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I think like the bridge will always be there. We always want to have it open because it won't. It's it's not something that we are uh, that that you know. It, why would we close it down? Like it's a, it should be a part of the broader ecosystem. I think that's just the, the way that we we see the world work. Yeah, yeah. AXS uh, or AXS staking rewards. How long is, do you think this is going to last? I mean, these are great rewards right now. If you are staking Axie, it's it's unbelievable. So what's the what's yeah, the timeline they, they, on that? <laughs> The, the great thing about uh, the the AXS staking rewards is that they're tied for several years. I think the next next reduction is coming for something in in twenty twenty five, and right. right now the APY is around eighty five percent. Last mm-hmm. time I checked, so you know, I for me personally, I think <laughs> AXS is one of the best uh, tokens to hold because it has production productive cash flows and a, and a and a heavy team behind it building. Um, of course, not financial advice, you know, given this is the U.S. type of uh, show. But the, the 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 thing in is here is we have no plans to, to reduce that uh, any anytime soon. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm bullish on AXS personally, of course, you know. But but we made it. Can't say anything else. Yeah, yeah, I I understand. I, it's it's a great program, and we've done a couple of videos on it. So if you guys are watching right now, check out our video on on Axie staking. It really goes into a lot of detail. Alexander, a couple more Axie, questions, and we'll. Uh, sorry. Could, could I just have a quick word about AXS staking? Uh, yeah, because I think it's do. important also to, 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 to mention, right? Um, you know, one of the principles, like how we're building Axie, is that we want people to provide value back to the ecosystem. Uh, so what I would say is that, you know, access staking won't be as lucrative forever unless you are prepared to, you know, basically do some other work as well as you're staking. So, I mean, I would use this opportunity uh, while, while you can. And then, you know, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, provide you know, ample uh, time uh, to say, like, what will you have to do, for example, to achieve, you know, full staking rewards or even a bonus mm-hmm. staking reward. And I think that's that's actually better. So assuming that, you know, you would have to tweet about Axie or something like that, you know, then you would get a bonus on your stake. I think that's a quite exciting from from uh, from a game design perspective. Yeah, and I think obviously that's the social aspect. It helps fuel the system and keep. Yeah, it, it it's back into the community, you know, concept of what play to earn really and play and earn is really about. So, totally understand where you guys are going with that, Alexander. Just a few more questions and we'll wrap it up. But um, okay, we're looking at at really kind of. I think twenty twenty one was the breakout year for play and earn and play to earn. Just blockchain gaming in general, the potential for. Game studios that we're seeing being developed in blockchain versus tr- traditional game studios that have already been out there for a decade to two decades, the transition, kind of the, the passing of the guard, so to speak, do you think that will occur at any point in time or do you think this will ever become uh, a little bit of a, a hybrid or do you feel like there are always going to be two separate areas? And I think we're in the same you know paradigm shift as we saw what happened with free to play games and free to play game studios. Like there will be winners uh, that arrive. Like we're, like is Sky Mavis a supercell of this cycle? You know I think so. Right. Can Sky yeah. Mavis be the future Nintendo? I think so too. Uh, yeah. But there will be other winners too. But I have like strong doubts that you know we will see some pivots from existing you know massive game studios. I think Ubisoft is actually trying really really heavily to do something like this, like a light yeah. like crypto pivot. Uh, but, but but still, you know, there, there are, there's so much backlash and there's so much legacy, you know, concern, shareholders that they have to, you know, 
uh, they, they can't be as agile as any of these new companies can be. So you know, that's why I'm less bullish on them, um, like and the traditional games uh, game industry in general. But I think massive, massive value will be created, and there are a couple of you know real big winners that that will be will be coming out, and you know hopefully you know Sky Mavis will keep up the the market position. Yeah, I would say that what we've seen, you know, just within general, within the community that we track, obviously we look and analyze games on a constant basis, play to earn, all that. One thing that is uh, very evident in what we've seen, at, at least at this level, and also to a certain extent with uh, AAA Studios, is this transparency uh, component. And when you look at what's happening with Axie, there seems to be a bit of a shroud there. Are you looking at trying to open up transparency and really make that more of a community-driven component? So, so when I think about transparency, I think it's a force that needs to be wielded in a very careful way. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, when we started out, actually, we were very transparent about everything that we were doing because we didn't have any legit, legitimacy. So it's a way for us to get legitimacy, and, and we can also, you know, pre basically pre-sell what's happening by by giving timelines and you know be, people price that in so the earlier you are in development the more transparent you have to be like as you ship things as you become more of a like an established game studio you can you know hide some things because you would want it to be more battle tested before you're shipping it you want the systems to, to actually function when you ship them and, and for us that's really important because right now there are several billions of dollars at stake so we need to make really you know, heavy decisions. And if we then want to be as transparent, like imagine if I'm saying, oh, right now we're looking at, you know, introducing 15 different new tokens, you know, it would be panic in the market. Yeah. Yeah. And then the week after I'm like, oh, now we're looking at this one. Like <laughs> that, is that transparency or are you just like, do you not know what you're doing? And that, yeah. <laughs> so that to me, it's, it's, it, it's a, a transparency is, is something to be careful with. But, you know, of course we try to be as transparent as we can and we're sharing like development updates and, and but, but I think like this constant craving for transparency is also uh, something that, that, that you know, will never, if you really go down that path, you know, you, you will, you're basically will be sharing the, your sleep schedule with the community in the end. Like that's the level of transparency and, oh, now you're, maybe you're sleeping too little. Like, why aren't you like that? I mean, I, we're not going that far, but I can see that happening because yeah. people want that level. Like they want to know that you guys are working, giving it your, your all. And I think, you know, as you keep shipping, that pressure should actually, you know, lessen. But in reality, it's not. They just keep piling on. And as developers, we have to, you know, be confident enough to say that, you know, this is the level that we're willing to say. And, you know, in the end, I know it's a meme, but, you know, hey, this, you have to trust us. Like, if you don't have faith yeah. in the team, <laughs> then probably, you know, Axie is not, you know, for you. And I think right. that's fair to say. But that, that also takes a level of... Uh, I, I would say, you know, you need to have some balls to say that because, yeah, sure. you know, people are not going to like it. And, you know, that that's fine, too. And I, and I want to and I think it's important for, for people to, to, to respect also the developers who are building it. Like this is these are very, very complex systems that are being created. Yeah, and I think you know, you're right you, to the point to when you get to a level of where, where Sky Mavis and, and Axie is with great power comes great responsibility. You know, you're addressing a market in many cases you're shifting markets because of the fact that you guys were the first mover in in the space so you have the ability to really kind of uh, it's the tail wagging the dog so to speak so it, it is a, a big responsibility i think to the space in general alexander when you look at what's happening in play to earn playing play and earn gaming in general is there anything that is surprising you or that's opening your mind up to go, hmm, they're doing something over there at Big Time or doing something over here at Star Atlas or the, all these different projects that are out there that are bringing back increments of information that you guys are thinking this could, could redirect into our strategy. I mean, I don't really think so because nobody has shipped anything that that has tangible traction for a long time. You know, when I'm yeah. seeing something like Saturn Arena or some of these other games that, you know, have a really high growth curve, and then suddenly it, it you know goes down. It makes me realize you know hey okay this is it it it, it right. reaffirms my belief that just how hard it is. So when I'm looking more at you know big time and, and, and some of these like larger AAA even mythical games, mm -hmm. I, I think it's really early still for for them. And, and you know they they still have to find their way. Uh, and until you ship something that people can actually play and it, it's scalable for you know you have more than one hundred thousand players. I mean for me, it, it, I feel like it's not relevant to us. Because we are trying to make systems for millions of players, mm -hmm. if not billions. Right. 
So yeah. it, it's it's hard to it's hard to extrapolate necessarily because as I said, like making a system for one hundred people, you know, it's quite easy for people to do that. A thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, but you know, when you're when you're getting up into the millions, that's the big leagues. And you know that that means that you know sure we're looking at it. There there are cute things that I think make sense. There's some DeFi. I'm actually I'm I'm super hyped for Dark Forest, but you know it's not it it's it's more about you know the the, the way that they're using you know zero knowledge um, proofs to generate well, the world, yep. which I think is yeah I think it's amazing. I think it's just like mind blowing. But at the same time, you know that's not commercial enough for me because what we want to make is a commercially successful game. But you know what they're doing, what what that guy is doing, he's just a genius. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure if it's going to be commercially successful, right? But but it's still, yeah, I, I love that sort of stuff, and I think that's really where some of the innovation will come from, um, and that we potentially can can look into an axiom and kind of and see like does it make, make sense to generate a map in this way? Or, like that that that's really that's really exciting to me. And until I see some other games with commercial success, I'm like cautiously on the sideline. Okay, cool, you, you can do what you want, and 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 then we'll see which strategy is is the best. And I can only you know, have faith that that. You know, we know what we're doing. So, you know, I'm bullish on Sky Mavis only. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Last question on this, and that is uh, when you look at these partnerships that you guys are starting to develop, uh, Samsung being one of them, you know, the potential for Samsung dropping, um, you know, now video cards into their TVs, the potential for real cloud gaming, especially with bandwidth scenarios being what they are today, we'll continue to see that increase. Do you think cloud gaming will continue to be a huge target for what we will see in this sector? Yeah, it's like the wet dream of, of game companies, I think. <laughs> just like you don't need to rely on any hardware at all. Anyone can just make it. Uh, right. it just just ship their games and it was a really high quality. Um, so I think we're still a couple of years out. I mean, it's the same for me as we have VR, AR um, and blockchain even. like so, so some of these technologies take time to mature. Uh, you know, cloud gaming has been a meme, I would say, in the industry for a long time. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I'm bullish on you know that happening over time. It's just yeah, it, it takes time to develop good stuff. Yeah, still just a little bit early. Alexander, it's been great having you on the show today. Thank you so much for all the download. It's been amazing. Good luck to what you guys are doing at Sky Mavis. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Happy to be here, and I'm happy to come back later as well. All right. You bet. All right. Excellent. Good day. Thank you. All right. You guys are stopped in over on the podcast right now. That was a great one. This is, of course, what we do here on Tech Path. But one thing you have to do is jump over to our YouTube channel because this is where all the action happens. It's where we do our breakdowns, our analysis, all of our deep dives, as well as it's where you can join in to the Diamond Circle, which is our private member group that gets a lot of these drops and also analysis on many of the projects that we look at on a day in, day out basis. You can do that by just clicking the link below. Of course, if you want to reach me out on Twitter, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.